Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. And in this video, I got a bunch of unboxings to do with you guys here today for some books and some characters that always bring a smile to my face. So I'm really excited to open these up because some of these books are actually some of the last books that I need to complete my Avengers Grail run. That is right, at the time of recording this video, I only have five books left that I need on my list. And I gotta tell you, I'm having a little bit of collector anxiety, a little bit of an existential crisis with my comic book collection. But in this video, it's all smiles right now. I'm gonna open up these books. I'm gonna show you guys the last remaining books that I need for my Avengers Girl Run. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about my plans of what to do maybe later on, what I wanna do after I complete my run, maybe some of the content that I'm gonna make about it because I do think that there's a lot of interesting things to talk about from a comic collecting point of view uh, based on just completing runs and series and goals that you are going after in your comic book collecting journey. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe or join the content, help support the channel, doing those things, I'd appreciate it. But let's get into the first box here today. Now, this is actually uh, two boxes that was sent over to me by friend of the channel, Comic Ozzy. If you guys don't know Comic Ozzy, he also has a YouTube channel. He's been on live streams multiple times before, but I definitely recommend that you go check out his channel. Always doing great unboxings and things like that. And he knows that I've been working hard on my Avengers Grail run. And he was kind enough to send me a few books uh, out of the kindness of his own heart. Now, I know I said my goal was to find all of these books in the wild, but I'm kind of gonna cheat a little bit on this one, and I feel like sort of networking with other comic book collectors out there uh, kind of counts for this. I think that that is part of the journey. Well, Kamikaze, he sent me a note right here. Swag, happy to help you finish your Avengers run. Thank you for the laughs, inspiration, and friendship. Enjoy, brother. Ozzy. Aw. You guys, that is really, really nice, you know? I guess all this time, it's not so much about the books, it's about the friends you make along the way, but also about the books. All right, let's open it up right here, and this is pretty awesome. Uh, he also put a little PSA comic card here. Series one, Marvel Universe, added throw in right here. Check this out, guys. The X Factor versus Apocalypse battle right there and I can't get the camera to focus. You're ruining it for everybody at home. And this is in a Gem Mint 10, a Gem Mint 10. You know, Marvel cards are pretty interesting. Surprisingly, you know, uh, th these Marvel Universe Series 1 cards definitely blew up uh, pretty hard, you know, during the pandemic. And obviously the prices have come down, but the Gem Mint 10s have held up pretty well, generally speaking. And I think one of the reasons for that is that there's actually just a lot of set collectors. I mean, we've been talking about that here on the channel uh, uh, for 2023. And, uh, you know, shout out to Drew from Como. I, I mentioned that in the other video I did where, you know, we're going back to runs. We're going back to, you know, people filling up their bins or, or going for those bin books once again. And people are looking to finish their sets. And that is seemingly true of the comic book card world as well, where a lot of people in the comic the Marvel card space, uh, you know, they just like to complete the sets. I mean, obviously there's still gonna be demand for the big, you know, key comic cards, but even the non-key cards in the Gem and Tens have been able to kind of hold up some of the value uh, because of the fact that, you know, people just wanna have the whole series. Ooh, these are pretty nice copies. All right, let's go, let's go through these here uh, one by one. And the first book I have to share with you guys here today on this unboxing is this classic cover right here, Avengers number 93, the great Neil Adams cover. Uh, this was of that time when it was the combination of Roy Thomas and Neil Adams doing the Avengers stuff. And this one is a really cool book. You know, this is one of those ones in this run that typically speaking, every time I've seen it in the wild, which, you know, is a decent amount of times. It's not that you can't find this book. It's that whenever I see it, I always see people charging like, you know, $70 for it or whatever the case is. Like they, they definitely tend to mark this one up because this particular book is a square bound book. Uh, you know, it tends to be like, it was the more premier, larger size format. I mean, it was a 25 cent cover at a time when this was usually when covers were like 15 cents. So uh, this is a big bigger format and usually marked up by a lot of dealers. You know, the Neil Adams covers are always, I don't know if they're just more desired or, you know, maybe that's just a leverage that dealers use as like, hey, it's a Neil Adams cover, therefore I'm gonna charge more money for it. But these tend to be uh, maybe slightly in higher demand. And this was 
one that, you know, I was speculating that, you know, of the books that I had left in my series, this was maybe going to be one of the final ones that I was going to get because of the fact that, you know, I, I'm pretty stingy when it comes to this. Like I want to find, you know, all these books for like less than $20 out there in the wild. I'm just trying to make it a goal of myself. But an awesome book to have. Definitely happy to check this one off the list. And very rare that you kind of see, I think, this kind of brownish, reddish, uh, color on a lot of comic book covers uh, from back in the day. All right, and the other one in this book is another Neil Adams uh, cover in this kind of, you know, run of Avengers. This one right here is Avengers number 96, the Vision cover right there. Another great Neil Adams cover. Very, very cool to have this one. This is actually another one of those books where, um, you know, not that these books are particularly rare, but I tend to rarely see this one. You know, I don't know what it is about like kind of that later run of Avengers, you know, the about 92 through about 99 when you have these Neil Adams covers. Uh, this is one of the ones that, you know, in the time I've been doing this entire Grail run, uh, obviously I've never come across this one for less than like whatever I want to spend, like $25, $20 or whatever. So, you know, kind of hard to find this one and super happy that, uh, you know, Comic Ozzy was generous enough to send these over to me because, you know, these are ones that, like I already mentioned, you know, dealers tend to uh, upcharge this one. And, you know, I got to save my money where I can because I have a lot of books that I still want to buy. And speaking of buying comic books, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Torpedo Comics. Now, for those who don't know, Torpedo Comics is one of the best comic book stores in the country. They are based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, but have locations in the southern California area as well. And they have this online store, torpedocomics.com, where they have all of these amazing keys that you can find. Look at this, new to the shop, golden and silver age keys. They got mystery boxes, CGC and CBS slabs. They got trading cards if you're into that kind of thing. But of course, you guys know me, I like my comics raw. And if I go down here to their store, I can use this handy search feature, type in Avengers and see what books might help me complete my grail run. Well, I see a Avengers number 101 right here. You know, after I complete my one through 100, who knows, maybe I'll stretch it out to 200 and I can start my journey right here with 101. And the best part about torpedocomics.com is if you use my promo code SWAGGLEHOSS, which you'll see in the description, you'll be able to save 10% off on your order. Maybe that 10% will help you guys complete your grail run. I want to say thank you to Torpedo Comics for sponsoring this video and let's get back into the unboxings. All right, let's get into the next box right here. Another one from Comic Ozzy. Definitely appreciate him sending me over all of these books. Great to have friends like this in the community. Another thoughtful letter right here. Swag, Hope this brings you a bit closer from Ozzy. And another awesome Marvel card right here. Hold on guys, we gotta, we gotta take this one out of the box right here. All right, well the first thing he sent me here is this really cool Marvel Metal card of Vision right here. I, I love me some Marvel cards. I know not everybody who watches the channel loves Marvel cards, although I did you know, make that one original Marvel card video, uh, one of the bigger videos on my channel, and that definitely drew in a lot of people to my channel when I initially started it during the pandemic. And uh, let me know in the comments, do you guys want to see more Marvel card content? Because there's some other uh, great Marvel card channels that have been talking about this stuff, and uh, they've been you know, wanting me to hop onto their live streams, and I want to definitely do some some content with them and stuff like that because you know I have a fondness for it uh, just you know out of nostalgia I don't know if you guys uh, personally like the Marvel card stuff as well but uh, let's talk about the Avenger books that Ozzy sent me as well another one that I needed for my grail run this one right here is Avengers number 18 an early Avengers book and another one that you know I've seen this book a few times but you know it's really hard to find this one for a good deal it tends to be that you know when you when you're in that like sub 20 of any sort of run is sub you know 20 for amazing spider-man sub 20 for fantastic four sub 20 for daredevil runs like that it tends to be that people have like a little bit higher of a sticker on these particular books 18 was one of the last top 20 ones that i still need to check off the list and this was an interesting time of the avengers you know uh this was when scarlet witch and quicksilver uh had joined the team and it was just these four really it was scarlet witch quicksilver captain america and Hawkeye. And actually, that's one of the things I think is always really interesting about the Avengers team is the turnover rate, you know, and, and who, you know, is on the team at any given point in time. Even when you go throughout the years through like the 100s and the 200s and things like that, you know, you have times when Wasp is the leader of the Avengers and like the, the team is so random. It's like Submariner, Wasp, and Hercules. You know, those are like the three mainstay Avengers characters. And I think that that had to do with, you know, what is going on with the other popular series. You know, if you have an ongoing series with Thor and 
and Captain America, you know, the Avengers team is basically like a platform to elevate other characters that can't command uh, their own solo titles. All right, this next one he sent over to me is another one coming right after that, Avengers number 20. This is actually the time when the Swordsman joins the Avengers team. Uh, of course, you guys remember the Swordsman. He was the guy that was in the Hawkeye show. I wonder if we're going to get more Swordsmen in the MCU. I can't imagine if we do. It's going to be that significant. But I could see, you know, if they really just decide to have every single hero possible in Secret Wars, I mean, maybe he'll just have like one or two shots like in that big, you know, sort of portal scenes or whatever. Uh, but this is another one uh, kind of in the last era of when Jack Kirby and Stan Lee were doing Avengers uh, together. I think this might be the last issue that they did together, or maybe it's a couple issues after that. Uh, and then eventually it would turn over to Roy Thomas and Don Heck. Uh, and the Don Heck stuff is very, very interesting. If you guys really know, Don Heck uh, wasn't my favorite uh, artist of the Avengers runs. I, I, I feel like a lot of those middle issues aren't, aren't my favorite. And then when it turns over to like uh, Sal Buscema and John Buscema and Marie Severin, uh, I think it gets uh, really good again. And speaking of those artists, this other one that I have to check off the list right here is Avengers number 73. A very interesting cover. You know, I, I don't know how you guys feel about this one. It's the all blue aesthetic. You know, these guys are kind of looking at Black Panther. I think this is a Black Panther issue. Uh, not necessarily his origin story, but, you know, one of the issues that is focused on the Black Panther. And actually this features the first appearance of a love interest of T'Challa, which I thought was really interesting because, you know, there's a recent book that came out just this last week. I think it was Wakanda number four. That was the love interest of Tosin Aduye. And that book, of course, like the market does, is totally speculating on that. But it's like, well, this right here is a love interest of T'Challa. So sh shouldn't this book be worth, you know, four times more than whatever the Wakanda book is going for. I mean, it probably is, but generally speaking, I thought that, that was pretty funny that people are, you know, losing their minds on speculating for that when here right here is the love interest of the actual Black Panther, not necessarily the character who is the next Black Panther, but a very, very cool book. Happy to check this one off the list as well. And the last book that Ozzy sent to me is this one right here, Avengers number 98, one that I already actually had in my collection. So Ozzy, I'll have to get you back with another book or I'll have to send you some stuff. Uh, maybe move on with one of these copies. I'll see which one. Maybe this is a better grade than the one I actually have, but another sort of uh, Neil Adams book right here or that time when Neil Adams was doing the covers, kind of completing the one through 100. And that's kind of where I am right now, guys, where I only have five books left for my one through 100 grail run. So I figured, you know, we can kind of hop into the CLZ app right here. And let me show you guys, generally speaking, kind of where I am as far as like how many books I have left to pick up for my collection. Well, there you can see right there, this is me having the one through 100. Uh, gotta love the desktop version of the CLZ app. Uh, just kind of fun to see books like this uh, digitally sit on the shelf. But if I go over here to wish list and then I tap on Avengers, these are the five books I have left to get in my collection. Collection. Number 24, I believe that this one is the second appearance of Ravona Renslayer, which, you know, uh, will be interesting to see if uh, Ravona shows up in Loki season two. I'm sure she will. Uh, this one right here is Avengers number 26. Not really sure if there's anything significant about this one, but again, another of that issue where this is kind of the main team where you have Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Hawkeye, Captain America, and now Wasp in this one, uh, which, you know, is kind of an interesting sort of iteration of the squad. Here is Avengers number 29, which is, again, now this is in that era where Don Heck was doing a lot of the artwork. Uh, not my favorite style, but, you know, definitely cool still. This was when, you know, you had a lot of Hank Pym as Giant Man. Then you get to Avengers number 76 right here. And actually, this is kind of a interesting minor key. This is actually known as the first time that Vision and the Scarlet Witch meet. So a pretty cool book for that reason. And at least in my personal experience in hunting, this is another one that I don't see as often. And when I do see it, I tend to see it, you know, kind of marked up. So I would suspect that that might be the last last one I end up finding for myself. And then the last, last one I need is Avengers number 88, first appearance of the character known as Cyclop. And if you guys remember, this is a book that I had thought I picked up for myself, but I was actually fooled 
by picking up the second printing of this one, you know, with the Stridex on the back cover. They guess they did a bunch of reprints of this in the 90s, and I basically fell for the old facsimile trap where I thought that that was a pretty decent copy for the Silver Age book, but it turns out that it was a book uh, printed in 1991. So that's kind of where I stand with the Grow Run. I'll be going to a couple cons in the next coming weeks, so I'm sure I'm going to be able to get any five of those books at those cons if I decide to, you know, buy, buy them and pull the trigger. Uh, and, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to finish out the Grow Run a little bit uh, feeling, you know, kind of in this existential crisis. Like, I don't know what's going to be next for the run journey. Uh, you know, I'm going to definitely do a lot of videos about it, a lot of takeaways. I think there's some cool things to discuss with it. You know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's really about the hunt, right? Finding the books is the fun part. Not, not. I mean, owning the books is the fun part too, but the journey along the way is really what makes it sort of exciting. That's really one of the reasons why I decided to do this, just because I thought it would be kind of a fun thing to do, uh, not only for me, but just for the channel right here. You know, having something to look forward to every time you go to a con. You know, if you don't feel like buying a wall book, you know, you can at least find something in a back bin. So it's, it's nice to always have a bin to target uh, when you're out there in the wild. And that's one of the things that I would always encourage you guys to have sort of those mini goals. You know, it doesn't have to be that big major key that you got to check off the list or you got to spend five figures on. Uh, just having something that you're going after uh, makes comic book collecting really, really fun, at least in my opinion. All right. And this last little thing I wanted to open up here was another one that was a gift from friend of the channel, Canadian Comic Pickup. Shane, also a viewer of the channel and also another Canadian like Comic Aussie. I don't know what it is. I guess, you know, the Canadian people, they're so nice. They like to send me books and uh, another little a nice handwritten letter right here. God, this is so nice, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy the Dark Hawk books. I cannot think of a better home for them. Thanks again for all the amazing content and information you put out for the comic community. It really is top notch. Wishing you the best in 2023. Shane, Canadian Comic Pickup. So go check out Shane right there, Canadian Comic Pickups on Instagram. He sent me over these books and uh, you know, these are just these are just some fun ones. All right, and the two books that Shane sent over to me were two homage covers of, of course, my favorite comic book character, Darkhawk. This one right here is the Darkhawk number one, Hulk 181 homage with Cosmic Ghost Rider right there. A very, very cool book. You know, this is one that, you know, I've seen many times and I, I thought to myself, oh, I probably should buy it. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I just never have. As much as I love Darkhawk, I'm not necessarily a completionist. Like I don't have to have every single thing that he has, although I will buy the number one issue every single time I see it. Uh, but this one is really cool. Very, very happy to add this to the Dark Hawk collection. And, you know, generally speaking, the homage covers, just as a genre, I think are something that are really interesting to talk about, especially when you get to ones like this, Dark Hawk number three, the variant edition, the homage of Amazing Spider-Man 300. Of course, you guys know this post by now, the homage here. And I feel like homages, I don't know, like I am definitely a fan of homages. I can definitely get suckered into them and buy the occasional homage every now and again. But it definitely feels like there's a large saturation of homage covers. And I feel like I should probably make a video specifically on the topic of homages and just talk generally about, you know, what I think they do in terms of their market prices. I mean, it's all over the spectrum. You have a lot of homages that come out and then they just kind of taper off. You have a lot of homages that actually, some of which have, you know, maintained their values or been able to go up over time. Uh, generally speaking, the homage, of course, is never going to be able to exceed the value of whatever the original book it is homaging. Uh, but it is an interesting topic and one that I will definitely eventually do a video for. Well, that is all for this video. Those are me kind of doing my unboxing for all of these great Avengers books right here. I get to check a bunch off the list. Only five more to go. Let me know what you guys think. Have you guys been completing your grail runs here in 2023? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next video.